Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Mateo Chavez Lewis, and in this video I'm going to give you a little bit of an update about what's been going on with me the last week. I went to New York City and I experienced a few awesome things in New York City. Um, the first one was the NAMPT Festival, the National Alliance for Musical Theater. They had a bunch of readings of new shows with Broadway star studded casts, and I saw a lot of musical theater new works that I'm really excited about. The other thing was a concert at Carnegie Hall featuring Jason Robert Brown, who's like one of my idols, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about what that concert was like. I also saw Maybe Happy Ending, which I would love to do a video on on the channel soon, because I thought it was one of the most original new works of musical theater I've seen in years. And uh, the other thing is that I was in the studio recording the cast album for the show that I wrote, Tommy Rhodes, which comes out very soon. So I've got a little announcement video for that that I'll play at the end. You'll get to hear one of the tracks from the album. I'm so, so excited about that. Okay, first a little bit about the Jason Robert Brown concert. Um, so it was at Carnegie Hall, which I've never been to before because I'm from Canada. Um, so I've only been spending time in New York very recently. So I've never actually made it to Carnegie Hall. It, uh, it's a pretty cool place. It should have a bit of a reputation, I think, um, for being pretty cool. Oh wait, it does. And Jason Robert Brown is just one of these fantastic, fantastic artists. He is so original in the way that he writes, so maximalist musically, which is something I really appreciate and is something that is really powerful to witness live with an orchestra. And then he also had this star-studded list of special guests. So he had Shoshana Bean, obviously incredible, Ben Platt, one of my favorite singers, Kelly O'Hara, another one of my favorite singers, Billy Porter, Heather Headley, Raul Esparza, J. Harrison G. Like what a lineup. Literally incredible, incredible, incredible vocalists and musical storytellers, all of them. Um, he played a number of songs from his hit shows. For example, Heather Headley sang It All Fades Away, which was haunting and beautiful. Uh, Kelly O'Hara sang a few songs from Bridges as well. Um, Shoshana Bean sang a song from the last five years. Raul Esparza and Ben Platt both sang things from Parade. Ben Platt sang See Yourself from The Connector, which is a little bit more recent. Um, Shoshana Bean sang Stars in the Moon from Songs for a New World, which is obviously one of Jason Robert Brown's first works. So the concert really spanned his entire career. It was magnificent to witness. It even featured some songs from Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, which is a show that premiered in Chicago and is coming to New York next season. J. Harrison G. was in that production and they sang a song from that show. And then also, and this is one of the things that was the most striking to me about it, is he introduced a few songs from his current passion project that he's working on, which is an adaptation of the novel Less. And this is what was really, really inspiring and interesting to me about this experience, about this concert, was that I've been watching the videos that Jason Robert Brown has been making here on YouTube, actually, where he analyzes the, the, the music theory in The Connector. He basically does what I do for other composers on his own work. And I think that's just so cool to hear a composer talk about their own work. Um, especially a composer who thinks about it as deeply and has as many crazy creative ideas as Jason Robert Brown does. I just think that's so incredible. And when you watch those videos, you see how much of a passion project The Connector was for him and for Daisy Prince, obviously, who was working on it with him, um, and, and for the book writer and for the cast and for everybody who was working on it. And this also, less this new musical he's working on, also sounds like such a passion project for him, something he's so personally excited about. And that was the most inspiring part of the concert for me to see that the way that I nerd out about the projects that I'm working on that I get really, really excited about, and the way that I, you know, invite my friends to sing those songs with me because I just love making music with these people that I love, that experience that I have when I do that, and the experience that you have when you do that, which I'm sure you do if you're watching Music Theater Theory, the nerdiest channel on YouTube, I'm sure you're also a huge music nerd. And the thing is, what I realized watching this enormous king of nerds, Jason Robert Brown, 
be his nerdy, emotional, sensitive self live on stage at Carnegie Hall, what I realized was that when you and I do that, we're doing exactly what Jason Robert Brown is doing. You know what I mean? There's an, there's an element of, at least for me, there's an element of Jason Robert Brown's name and his, his status as a titan of the musical theater industry that I, I have a certain reverence for him. But I realized watching that that I, not that I don't need to respect him because I respect him so much, but I don't need to revere him like a god. Um, everybody who makes music, even at the highest, highest level, is just a silly nerd doing something they love with their friends. And there's something about that realization that is really, really powerful to me. Um, and so I hope that you take something positive away from that little nugget that I came to realize while I was watching that concert. Speaking of nerdy little projects that I love doing with people I love, I'm recording a cast album of the musical that I wrote. The musical is called Tommy Rhodes. I've talked about it a lot here on this channel. Um, I wrote music and lyrics and I collaborated on the book with Avely Keller. And we did a world premiere production in June at a small little theater in Toronto. And it went very well. We got amazing reviews. I was just so humbled and stunned by the response. And one of the amazing things that came out of that production is that we now have the opportunity to record a cast album. It's very grassroots. It's just like piano and vocalists. Um, but I'm really excited about how the tracks are coming together, how they're sounding, the ones that we've mixed and mastered already. And so I want to give you a little preview of it. So I'll play a track from the album. It's called Charlotte's Soliloquy. And uh, I also have a little video clip with some clips of that production that we did in June. So watch, enjoy, and stay tuned for the Tommy Rhodes cast album coming out in December 2024. Yes. And um, if you sign up for my Patreon, there's a link in the description. Everything that I'm writing, everything that I'm working on, I upload to Patreon as I work on it. So you get to witness the messy creative process as I go through it over at Patreon. And that also means that you get to hear these tracks from this cast album before anybody else does as they're finished. I will be uploading them to Patreon. So go over to Patreon, check that out. If that interests you, this is the cast album announcement video. April 14th, April 20th, April 22nd, May 1st, May 2nd, May 3rd. These accounts don't add up. He said, she heard. What's the truth when the fact is the facts are obscured? Does anybody know the truth about my history? Can anybody tell me how to solve this mystery? 1933, there's a boy in the city and a boy on a farm, and they both disappear. If the crimes are related, well, it isn't quite clear. But then what's weird is the following year, a man arrives in town with a boy who helps him sell his wares. And the mothers of the missing kids both claim the child is theirs. Which one is lying? Which one denying the truth that's right before their eyes? Was that Tommy Rhodes, or is my whole life built on lies? April 14th, Leslie Rhodes tells reporters this can't be my son, he's much too short. But by April 22nd, she's changed her mind, so sure that she's willing to go to court. Is it possible she just believes the things she wants to believe? Is it possible she sees the boy she still can't bear to grieve? I'm her descendant, I can't pretend it doesn't matter when it Which boy it was. April 14th, April 20th, April 20. April 14th, April 20th, April 20. Come on, Charlotte, don't lose focus, don't lose track, you deserve to know. What about Lisa? It's not about Lisa. She'll understand she has to, so keep following your instincts like 
like you've always done before. They've never steered you wrong, just trust in them a little more. Don't lose your calm yet, you're not a mom yet. Don't look at the sonogram, cause how am I supposed to raise a child when I don't know who?